this awesome neighborhood. So I felt a lot of the pressure of the people and like doing something right and well. So that's usually what keeps me up. My, most of my worst nightmares are weird, dumb social nightmares where I'm like naked in the band room in seventh grade or something. I'm like, what the fuck yeah, is this coming awful. back for? I never had those, but I, I feel your pain I'm on that glad one. Glad for you. Yeah. I wake Let's up wait. and I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> Did I just? I pissed myself again. Okay, another question that Kip, Kip, Kip mentioned this earlier, the saber. The yeah. Saber so what brought that all about? And like, how can oh, you dude. sign up to saber bottles? I don't want to saber bottles. You think you'll lose I will hand? fuck that. Uh, no, what's going to happen is I don't think I'm going to cut a finger off. Um, shout out to Jerry Very Garcia. Well, but I'm going to do something that's just going to shatter in my hands, and I'm going to have just two of them that just like. What did, yeah. I, what did I do wrong here? So t- is it easy, well, and how did you get about it? Well, so it's question. just fucking fun. It's like one of the best ways to really celebrate with, with somebody and with a group of people, right? Or alone. I'm not going to judge anyone there. Um, the I don't remember the first bottle I sabered. I can't remember, but it was, I'm sure it was in New York. Um, but it's just was – it's always been fun, right? And it seems magic, and it seems kind of intense and hard. And it's luckily like a lot about confidence and just a lot about finding the rhythm of it. Um, so again, it's also for me just practice. Like every week I hope to get better at it. Uh, we do classes. So if you ever want to saber something, we do saber classes a couple times a year, especially around New Year's. Um, but it's awesome, man. And I just love the challenge of trying to find something different to do. And it's just a badass way to like greet a table to say like, Hey, I can't really store this. I blew the top off of it with a sword a couple hours ago. So can you help me by drinking it? And they're like, yes, I can. I would love to. Thank you very much. You know, and it gives my staff and my guests a chance to try things they wouldn't have tried otherwise. You know, it's awesome. Like what's wrong with any of that? Um, here's my next question. Yes. Where did the idea of the straight arm pour down your gullet go, come from? For those that don't know, there's this game at Noble Riot where they bring what looks like a beaker fucking wine decanter. Wine and you object. Yeah, I mean, I guess. Whatever. It looks like a beaker. And you have to go from like a – it's pouring into your mouth and you have to get it to the point where you extend your whole arm. And every time I do it. It's just all <laughs> over the place. Like, I have to wear a fucking bib. Troy's like, Jesus, you look so we were So, actually, I was, to be honest. It's so much fun. It's a fun we vibe were, down here. I was just about to buy, like, in, I think it was March or April of 2020, I was designing uh, bibs just for that reason, so people could have them here. And then we haven't done the Perone for a long time because of COVID. But that's a Perone. It's a Spanish drinking vessel. It's, like, the smartest thing you could possibly do at a party because... In Spain, you just like put a full bottle's worth in there. You put it in the center of the table, and everyone just takes as much as they want. You're not cleaning 12 glasses at the end of the night. You're not doing all this stuff. You're just like giving everyone their share. It's a very like communal, fun way to to share wine, right? I it's badass. And so we would do it like throughout the entire restaurant and get people moistened on their chest parts for sure. But <laughs> what it's, a terrible uh, word for <laughs> moistened. <laughs> You've never played moistening your chest parts? Oh, I mean, not my oh, own, man. but every you know, accidents happen. But yeah, like it's just it was one of the, uh, again, like it was just another way to like have more fun with wine versus having uh, to have the uncle that knew something about something. You know, it's just like what's in there? It's the noble blend. It's free wine. Are you going to open your mouth? Who gives not? a fuck? I was going to say, like, <laughs> yeah. if you yeah. don't want it, I'm not going to force it in there, but I'll drink it myself. Did you ask the guy at the what to that squeeze bottle? <laughs> nope. <laughs> or the shrimp that he tosses in your right. mouth. No. It's the same boat. Yeah, exactly. Be like, yeah, I'll take any. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's a great way to describe. You, <laughs> you've created a badass awesome. batchy awesome. reference right there. I like it. I like it. That's awesome. Um, okay, Troy. So we actually have you here today on Monday. You're doing inventory. It's the day off. Mm-hmm. Let's say that you weren't doing some slap dick podcast today. Where oh. would your happy hour of choice be if you were to go out and just want to enjoy a drink out off sure. the clock? Like, give some shout outs it's to nice. friends. It's nice. There's so many cool places right now. It's awesome. Um, I'd say the first one actually is the one that I'm representing on my t shirt right now is my best, brother's one bar. Of the best burgers in Denver. Yeah. I love that spot. And I mean, I remember going here with my dad when he was going to like business meetings when I was young. I just love that spot. It's a Denver institution. I will handcuff myself to that door if they ever try to tear it down. They got a bunch, they got some money. Was it from Guy Fieri? 
No, uh, uh, it was someone famous gave him like a million dollars to do cool. something in the backyard during COVID to help him. Like, yeah, they got those ice. Yeah, yeah. The, I yeah. can't remember who it was, but the someone. owner's awesome, and he's also like bought the Mercury Cafe, which is another awesome hangout, just to make sure that those Denver institutions don't go away. So. Heads up for, for Mercury that. does He's a bunch of awesome. fun pop up uh, live music. Shout out to yeah, again, Benny, our boy. Jo- vo- uh, Benny was just over there the other night, I think. Yeah, it Saturday. Awesome. So um, I'll go there. I like Lady Jane a lot. I'm up in Low High, so I love hitting that spot. I checked out. Um, what do you think about Wildflower? Have you been there? I yet? like that spot. They do I've been a really trying nice to job. fucking get in there. It's harder than the goddamn Sphinx after hours. It's impossible. Well, it's pretty great, man. They do a nice job. It's great to sit at their bar. It's a fun little spot. They, I mean, I. Love the low high scene and kind of those like Wolf's Taylor and Wolf's some of those places it. are just like respites from the rest of the world, you know. So I'll go to those spots. Benzina on Colfax has been hooking me up lately. I like that spot a lot. Q House on Colfax. Dude, I dig that Chris spot. Chris kills but it over there. Those are sleeper insane, best right? chicken wings in Denver. So Nobody good. fucking knows about it, so don't tell anybody. I'm not going to. I hope oh, no one's shit. listening. No, Nobody's so, listening to this. No, no. Shout out to our, our moms <laughs> are listening. <laughs> We get two <laughs> listeners, one in Mississippi, one in Alabama. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm just kidding, sponsors. Sticky ribs? Yeah, it's so good. They were open on Mondays for a while, too, which I loved uh, for industry folk. But I, I'm really digging what they're doing. And, like, if I needed a carpeted bar, I'll go to P.S. Lounge because sometimes you need to feel carpet underneath. You're just underneath divey as can be. Yeah, right? Exactly. You're just the king of diveys here. I, I go, dig No, it. it's classy and trashy, man. I, you got I a little have, mixed bag over there. Yeah, I love going to the high-end joints. I love uh, I love it all. Michelin stars to McDonald's. All. Exactly. Them all. The exactly. French fries at McDonald's are just – they're revolutionary. <laughs> and somebody was trying to shit on me when I posted that I was hungover and had them. I was like, I went to McDonald's, uh, got a Coca-Cola and two large French fries yeah. to eat, which is why I had to and go to worked. the FedEx bathroom. Um <laughs> Oh, a lot happened a story- before you got yeah. here, Chris. We'll talk about that later. Um, but, yeah, I love that concept of the classy and trashy because uh, that's kind of what this – it's like a yin and yang yeah. of being able to appreciate fine dining and the finer things in life but also not taking yourself or what you may ingest too seriously right. either. Yeah, yeah, I fucking love Quinn that. actually was classic. He, he did this awesome pairing a couple years ago. We got this beautiful Pinot Grillon from Slovenia. Um and he was eating some flaming hot Cheetos, and he was like, "Guys, guys, holy shit! I think I found it. It's like the ultimate pairing. I think I just found it, everybody." And it was true. Like these flaming hot Cheetos and this beautiful, like pink uh, Pinot Gris from Slovenia were like nothing your brain had ever had before. So we we did that for a few guests. It was awesome. It was a good time. That that's what makes this place just a little bit different than the average bear. Yeah, pate is delicious. I love foie gras and things yeah. of that nature. But flaming hot Cheetos and a Slovenian white <laughs> makes it sound like I ordered it offline, you know? Right. Well, and like Which you can say, you can truly say orders. like who else in the world is enjoying this right now? Yeah, that's right? A, that's like a fun concept. Almost nobody, which is amazing. Okay, so another similar type question, not going to happy hour, but if you're looking to go out and you just want to get a really good bottle of wine, where, what like restaurant or food establishment are you going to? And then what's what the difference between a food establishment and a restaurant? I don't know. I was trying to say something else, and food establishment. Shout out to Burger King, food establishment, <laughs> fast casual. That's a corporate. Uh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, so I, a lot of times I'll hit, let's see, for wine specifically? Yeah. Um, I hit uh, Sunday Vinyl quite a bit. Those guys are doing such a good job. Um, also, Tavernetta always, especially if I'm feeling Italian. It's just nice to be able to, like, hang with those guys. I worked with some of them when I worked at Tavernetta. So it's good to see some old friends there. And they always have something fun and funky, whether it's something that I know that I have carried that I don't ever drink or something that I haven't even thought about that they've brought in, which is awesome. Um, but I also dig that there's so many other little places that have a lot of good wines. So even Wildflower, like they've got some killer bottles on the list. They have really simple things to really kind of complex things. Um, what else? Where else have I? Uh, Benzina has a pretty okay list. I like what they're doing. I, that's not really a great compliment. I'll say that again. <laughs> Benzina's uh, got a good list. Got a list. Let's cut that part. <laughs> no, I will say, like, I've got – that's what I meant. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Where it's just, like, I always like that I can find something there that goes so well with all their food. I feel like it's really thoughtful. It's really interesting. 
Um, oh, Brasserie fucking Brixton. I mean, that is, uh, it's got to be, it's up uh, there with a net and yes. a tavernetta, wolves, um, fit string with some of those that Hop Alley is obviously up there of some of the most like, you, if you, if you're not eating there at least once a month or two, then you're missing, you're something. doing yourself a disservice. Right. Because it's unbelievable. Yeah. Well, you now know? Greenwich, I think Greenwich could be added to that too. Cause really? they're popping some good stuff out of there. It's, it was good. So I heard the cheese, ta- the cheesecake's epic. Ooh, I didn't have that yet. I'll check it's it supposedly out. See, there's no, again, there's always a reason to go back. It's like a net. Like there's always a reason to go there. You I don't know what it is always, but there's always a reason to just go there. Possibly the best happy hour in Denver. I hate that they got rid of their brunch, but I mean, and that's good for just, them though. I mean, yeah, let sleep in, Caroline. Actually, you fucking I was just gonna it. say, like, anytime a brunch dies, I feel a little bit better for the team and sad for the guests. You yeah, know, I don't even feel bad for okay. the guests. It's I know, like, I just feel eat happy. Fucking for them. McDonald's hash browns and <laughs> get out to the bar. Right. There are, there are so many other things I'd rather do than ever have to work at brunch. Dude, Those were the worst. it's intense. It can be intense. For sure. It's just, you're, in a, you're, you're losing the second you walk on the other side. Right, you can't right. win. There's right. no, the only leave your way soul you, at home because it yeah. doesn't has no need there. I believe it was Bourdain's book, and I listened to it on audio tape, and what he says about brunch. Oh, it's man. Fuck, he's like, it's the person that missed a shift, or it was right. whoever fucked up that week it's was punishment. working fucking brunch. He's yeah. like, head chef should never have to do that. He's like, that is straight punishment. He's yeah. like, I'd rather die than do that. So the closest we've come, we did a we're uh, we're doing a midnight brunch, which I think will be a lot more fun. So everyone can just show up at Blitz the right Creek. time for a brunch, but just do like chicken and waffles and do some like breakfast gear and some funky fun mimosa style things, you know. So that'll be cool. Well, that leads me to one of our last questions of the night. You have three left, and then you're out of here. I promise. Shit, I thought we were going to open another bottle. Oh, yeah. Should I go grab another half bottle? Is that sufficient? A half bottle? That's so cute. I mean, those are 750s to me. regular size bottles are Magnums. But oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, cool. Kip, you stupid, <laughs> futile bitch. Half is a relative term. All right. We're going to pause this before these Sweet. next questions, but I'm going to have to write them down so I don't fuck it up like the last part. Yeah. Which are uh, these awesome folks from Sweden that are making these... Just amazing ciders. The, it, when you look at the the diverse range of crazy ciders that they're doing and how much they're just blowing up that side of things, I wanted to start with something that was just kind of way off the map and that was like cloudy and funky and totally different than what you'd expect walking into a wine bar, um, this chunky, funky cider, to something that we all think we know something about, right? So I picked a Burgundy. This is from Sarnon uh, Barracks. This is a... Awesome producer through an awesome importer named Superglue through another awesome distributor here in Colorado called Yes Wines. Um, awesome stuff. And it's just uh, talking again about how we can tow that line between things that appear super funky and that are from regions you've never heard about to something that we've all heard about but seeing what someone else's take on it is, which I really dig. So this is 100% Pinot Noir. Cheers, y'all. Yes. Oh. oh, yeah, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. Cool. So I love these wines that are red I, but I good acid that, that have a day. little chill on them. This is at, like, 54 degrees that just, like, pop no matter what time of year. Like, this is great in summer, but it's, like, it wintertime. It's, like, it's a day like today in liquid form, right? It's, like, not hot and not totally, like, T-shirt and shorts, but, like, it's Got it's shorts and energy, a hoodie. It's right? shorts. It's know? a perfect like Denver spring weather. Like, right. And it's it goes down so smooth. Like, especially obviously we came off the cider, but it's like it's not overwhelmingly like cherry flavor. For like sure. it doesn't like have those notes coming off of it. Yeah. So it's very like I can casually sip this in the sunshine, or if the sun goes For down sure. on the on the patio. Right. I and fucking then it love pairs it. with this foods it. really well. It's got um this is the one a little chew to it. Like it's got it's some. Yeah, it's got some structure for sure, and it'll open up and change for the last. I'll, I'll try to pace my last questions very slowly so we have time for it to open up. Oh, it's okay. I mean, I have We're, tons of stupid questions that PR reps <laughs> ask us not to ask their, <laughs> their people anymore. We can ask you. I'll be that guy. Yeah, dude. I'll we be had some for your questions. That's, that's classy awesome. yet trashy. Yeah, exactly. um, well, here's a quick question. You know, we were talking obviously about Noble Right and how y'all have carefully curated this. It's a team effort. 
what's the future of Noble Riot? Like, you're obviously, you're fucking buzzing. Like, the vibe is sick over here. And it, obviously, when the weather's nice, you can have double the occupancy right, almost. Exactly. Is there ever plans to go Noble Riot do? That's French for two. Isn't it? Yeah, it is. He was also a literature minor. 